here prior to the meeting. Each of these musicians has just completed fifth grade and will move on to sixth grade in September. At this time, I would like to introduce the members of the string ensemble and ask that each child stand when I call your name. From Ithan Elementary, Amanda Glansman. Anna Marie Glansman. Christine Kim. Andrew Yang. And Marcus Yang. From Radnor Elementary, Jackson Carey. Natalie Duman. Zachary Hahn. Joseph Kim. Amber Lee. And Owen Smith. And from Wayne Elementary, Grace Fulmer, R. of Menon, Aaron Ramon, and Andrew Yu. Thank you very much. Oh, I also would like to thank my dear friend, Mrs. Elaine Sloan, who retired from this district last year, for coming and helping us this evening. So if we could have a round of applause for all of the young musicians and Mrs. Sloan. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you, um, musicians. You are beautiful, and I'm sure the middle school is eagerly awaiting your rising up. All right. Um, are we all here? OK, good. <laughs> good evening. Um, let me call the meeting of the Radnor Township School District for June 27th, 2017 to order. Um, let's begin, please, with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. As you may notice, we're slightly sparse this evening. Um, we have three board members who are away and unable to be here, um, two for business and one who is uh, away on vacation. So we thank you for your forbearance, and the six of us will carry on bravely. Um, I want to report on executive sessions. Uh, the board met in executive session on May 25th for superintendent evaluation and a board development meeting. We met on June 20th for contract negotiations and this evening before this meeting um, to discuss personnel. And do we have a report from our students? They took the summer off. They took the summer off. <laughs> so no. Um, so a report from our superintendent, Mr. Bachelor. Yeah. Thank you, Julie. Thank you, I'd like to welcome everyone and it is our, our last uh, meeting of the school year. I want to thank again the students. I know some of them were uh, hustling to get to their um, next activity, but thank them for being here. Uh, it was so nice to have them here uh, performing uh, while we have an opportunity to honor our retirees. I'm going to keep my remarks very brief tonight uh, since we're going to take a moment to honor our retirees, and we also have some others uh, we want to honor tonight as well uh, for some of the exciting things that have been happening here uh, at Radnor. Uh, I have listed what a year. Uh, there's just a few of some of the exciting things that have been some of the exciting successes we have had uh, in the district this year, um, but there's nothing more exciting than seeing uh, the students playing here tonight or when a student is uh, in a classroom and that moment of aha or a light bulb goes off. Um, those, those are the moments that I think all of us in education live for uh, each and every day, but I thought it was worth also adding some of the exciting things. And I know as I was working with Mr. Petiti, that's always dangerous when we have a list like that, uh, because I'm sure there are many things that we're missing as, as well from that list. Um, I also want to just take a moment to uh, also thank some of the uh, donors that are we will be approving on this month's agenda. I want to thank Ethan Elementary School PTO and the Wayne Elementary School PTO um, for their donations uh, that they have made and all of their hard work uh, over the course of this past month or so. And with that, that concludes my remarks since we'll have uh, many recognitions tonight. All right. Thank you. Short and sweet. All right. <laughs> Mr. Madden, you're up. Yeah. Okay. 
Well, it gives me great pleasure and honor to be part of Radnor Township School District when we have so many extremely qualified, valuable, caring, supportive people that work for us. And this year we have some of those people who are retiring. And I will go back to the, what they want me to do. <laughs> Resolution of appreciation below has been prepared to honor the following retiring employees for their service in Radnor Township School District. These employees who have resigned for the purpose of retirement together represent 271 years. We have, first we have Teresa Coyle Borden, and I have someone here to present this with me. Correct? If you would, if you would come up, please. <laughs> it goes by Terry. <laughs> Confuse me already. What's that? He goes by Terry. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get confused, Tony. It's not me. <laughs> <laughs> so, Terry, we just, Tony and I could not come up here without each other to just recognize you, obviously. Coming here six years ago, and you were our mentor in coming into the district. So, and here we are, six years later, now recognizing you for all the accomplishments that you've done throughout the years. So I did have a chance, obviously, we've been only six years together, but I did get a chance to call Beth Niffin. And Marianne wants that, just get some information, but it's all good, I won't embarrass you. Um, but they just, you know, speaking of all the positions you had, from kindergarten to IST to a math half-day teacher, is it? Something along those lines that went to... Was Wynn Doris Gluck, who's in the audience, retired. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Yeah. And drove a bus that year, too. Yeah. No. <laughs> I didn't know uh, we could do that. That's a good idea. <laughs> um, as well as a second grade teacher for many years and co taught with Beth for a number of years. Um, you know, and all we could, I could say is from when I talked to one person after another and saying, I'm talking about Terry, and I want to make sure I say the right things that, that match with what I believe and what Tranya believes, and just the person you are in approaching every situation. Um, and addressing it from a point where you're finding resolution to what, what you want to occur. So, and thank you for all your insight into all those things. No, not at all. She has a good sense of humor for sure. See, there it is. Um, you know, obviously, just your years of different experiences, um, like taking care of frogs, um, writing to authors that you didn't know were deceased, <laughs> dressing up like Biola Swamp. You know, there's just many, many that can go on and on. Um, but we just appreciate the time we had with you as well, those six years, whether it was cooking a meal, um, going for a hunt through the Philadelphia Art Museum, singing karaoke <laughs> in a room down in Philly. I won't go there. Um, but in just finding out your love for pigs. Obviously came from give a pig a pancake is what I understand. And having a piggy pancake breakfast. I kept saying that over and over. Um, but obviously at this time, you know, the thing that sticks out the most is obviously just since 1995, your thoughtful decision, decision making that you've had, had an impact on staff, parents, but especially students. Um, and it just, it, it shines, obviously. I mean, just being at your uh, fifth grade promotion ceremony this past year, and Terry got through about two words, and the, and the tears just flowed. Because she couldn't get to that point, and she, you, you could tell she was just going to be missing um, those experiences. So we do have one question for you, because we couldn't figure it out. How many years were you at Radnor Elementary? I, see, I would probably have to back it up. I was two years in kindergarten. Okay. So 10 years as principal. We are close. And we I, said 11. Uh, that, that was in Radnor. Prior to that, I spent two years in Springfield School District as a paraprofessional. And prior to that, I was five years as a special educator uh, for multiple handicapped children. 
Well, obviously, Radnor was better off code coming here. So we, we are happy about that. So you know, just the, the thousands of lives that you've impacted over the years, we, we can't thank you enough. And we really appreciate it. So at this time, I send you off. We send you off with, um, I understand there were some lunches that you had competitions about um, while you were at Wayne with Beth Niff and Sally News and everything. And Beth wanted me to make sure that you knew you can now go prepare the best lunches and bring them to her oh. now that she'll be waiting for you to, to show up to school and ex spend some time there. So congratulations on your retirement. We thank you, and we love you. No, I didn't think so. Whatever you take. It'll be my it'll be my bedtime reading. I'll take it with me. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. The last time is the three T's. Yeah. I will. So right here. You can hold it up behind her. Yeah. Um. I wasn't sure if I would be expected to speak or not, so I did prepare just a little something. My notes. <laughs> and, whoops, yes. So I do, I do take this um, partially from uh, when Mr. Batchelor made his introduction. Uh, he did use some information from a child's perspective. And so um, I wanted to do the same. So this, uh, one, of, one of the best things about being a principal is the, certainly the connection to children. And the best part is when they kind of come toddling into your office and they have something to share. Uh, and a lot of times it's things that they, they've read or they, they've written. So the, the best part of that is when they hand that off to you. And I had an experience this year, early in the year, I walked into my office and it kind of caught me out of the, the corner of my eye. There was something hanging on the wall and it was this actually. And um, you some, if you could, that would be great. Mm -hmm. So I'll, it's just brief, but what it said was Mrs. Borden. My outside traits were that I wear glasses, Pretty, I appreciate that. Um, I have short hair, I'm about five feet tall, I have white hair, and I smile. And my inside traits were that I was busy, smart, kind, hardworking, energetic, honest, helpful, responsible, and caring. And as I kept, I left that up on the wall all year, and as I would look at it in and out of my office, I thought, that's a legacy I can live with. That is, that is something that really, truly touches my heart. If that's how my second graders envisioned me. And so I just thought that, that meant so much to me and felt like that was what I want out of a career. And 22 years in Radnor, uh, if, if I can walk out the door <laughs> with this perception, <laughs> then, then I am a happy lady. Uh, I, the only things I would add to that is that as I do leave, I really leave with a heart absolutely full of joy, um, of true wonder for the children that live and work and learn in this district. Um, and they have left me with a heart full. I also have a heart full of gratitude um, for all of my colleagues and um, every single person who I have been connected to here in Radnor um, has truly been amazing, um, has helped me to grow and to learn every day. Uh, and to have what has been a very satisfying career. So I appreciate that very much from all of you as a community. Thank you. Good job. I don't know how to pull it back up. I'll, I'll get it. <laughs> Oops. Let's go with Barbara Wade. Could she come forward, please? I actually have your pictures here, so. <laughs> <laughs> Again, we have somebody to speak on your behalf. Yeah, I'm done, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> 
Mrs. Borden, we have you until the end of the month, you know. <laughs> On behalf of Radnor Township School District, I'd like to thank you for all of your service. Um, the children I would like to thank you, I'm sure. Uh, the parents, the, the entire community, our school family, and the school board. And myself, I'd also like to thank you. I'll give you your plaque so I don't forget. Okay. Okay, it's me again. Uh, Bobby and I go way back. Um, Bobby actually started here in uh, Radnor Township School District as a student teacher. The following year, she spent that time as a paraprofessional uh, in one of the classrooms in Wayne Elementary. Um, and then she was hired in 1993 to be a second grade teacher. So Bobby had then spent her entire career in Radnor as a second grade teacher. And I can tell you that she is renowned and beloved. There, there is really not any other word than beloved. Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to say how much you were requested, although we don't accept requests for teachers. Um, the children and parents all do love her dearly. Um, and she has done an amazing job in her teaching career. When I was approaching what would be reasonable to say about Bobby, um, she, there are accolades uh, for her talent as a teacher. Um, and when I was trying to, th to think about descriptors for her, some of the other things that came up that you might not know, um, aside from her time um, as a teacher, she does have other loves also. She's something of an Anglophile. She is always proper. She describes her work with children as delightful. And one of the things she does is invites people to tea. So Bobby's well known for her author's teas. And this was a very large production that she would do towards the end of the year with her second grade students when they refined written work that they had done through the school year. And they have a large event where the children get up and public speak in order to read their works. Um, and parents are amazed and um, so very proud at that event. And it is something that they look forward to. We have even had people move from the district but want to come back to be at Bobby's Tea <laughs> in the same year. So when I thought about those things um, and all those characteristics, what really dawned on me is that Bobby Wade is actually the real life Mary Poppins. <laughs> <laughs> and so, I went in and I looked up all of the lyrics of all of the songs from Mary Poppins and uh, with some poetic license I pieced them together and that was how I would like to represent Bobby this evening. Uh, so the other piece about Bobby is that one of the poems that her children do was always called an I am poem. So I am calling this a you are poem. So this is you are for Bobby Wade from the lyrics of Mary Poppins. Ain't it a glorious day, right as a morning in May, or an evening in June? It's a jolly holiday with Bobby. Bobby makes your heart so light. It's a jolly evening here with Bobby. No wonder that it's Bobby that we love. You have a cheery disposition. You are kind and witty, very sweet and pretty. You can never be cross or cruel. You're a woman of high position, esteemed by your peers the cream of the crop, the tip of the top. You've taken time to grind, grind, grind at the grindstone. Achieve that sense of stature as your influence expands to the high strata that established scores demand. The children must be molded, shaped, and taught. In every job that must be done, there is an element of fun. You find the fun and the job's a game. You take them on outings, give them treats, sing songs, and bring sweets. See them grateful little faces smiling up at you. You use your words and then ask them out to tea. You are supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. You love to laugh loud and long and clear. We love to laugh so everyone can hear. The more you laugh, the more you fill with glee. 
the more the glee, the more we're a merrier we. Your world is calm, well-ordered, exemplary. You have carved a niche in the edifice of time. Though your words are simple and few, listen, she's calling to you. Cast off the shackles of yesterday. In glad company, you'll have your own set of wings. Go and chase your dreams. You won't regret it. Whatever you choose, fly a kite, sing a song, or write, you will be lighter than air. Never need a reason, never need a rhyme. Step in time to retirement. We've been blessed. Yes. <laughs> I just very briefly want to say that in 25 years, I think I've been asked, where do you teach? Thousands of times. Started in graduate school. Where do you teach and what do you teach? I've presented and, and attended math conferences all over the country. Where do you teach and what do you teach? Thousands of times. And every time I've said, I teach in Radnor, I've been proud. So thank you. Um, for 25 years of gainful employment and rich experiences. <laughs> Thank you very much. And that is another example of why people have pride in a school, because of each individual and when we add them together, and you'll be missed, but you've done a lot for a lot of children, and we'll thank you. We now have Mary Ellen Costello. On behalf of Rodney Township School District, myself, the community, the students, and the staff, your uh, coffee people you have coffee with, <laughs> everybody that you have touched in their lives, uh, I thank you on our behalf. And here's a certificate of recognition. Uh, we have to get a picture. And then Anthony will be up. Okay. <coughs> <coughs> Thank you so okay. much. <clears throat> Superintendent Bachelor, in the absence of President Falcone, members of the school board, remaining stakeholders present, ladies and gentlemen, um, as I stand before you tonight, I do so as a humble servant of the educational realm who for the past 13 years has the pleasure of being administrated in this district. It's an honor that would not have been possible if it was not for Ms. Mary Ellen Costello. You see, in, 19, in 2003, I interviewed for an assistant principal position here at Radnor Middle School with Bill Laffey. And if anybody knows anything about me and Bill Laffey, he is one of my best friends and my greatest mentors. But in 2003, our initial meeting, uh, let's just say we had a difference of opinions on a couple of things and agreed that we were not a good fit for each other. So I left and went my way and he went his. And then in 2004, I, I saw that RMS had another opening for AP position, and of course I didn't apply. Um, and it was to my surprise that Bill Laffey was on the other end of the phone calling to ask me to meet with him about the new opening. This time, Mr. Laffey and I had a better interaction and what led to now what is an unconditional professional and professional friendship. After I was hired, I asked Bill why he called me, and he said, well, the truth is, I never wanted to call you, and I never cared to see if I ever saw you again. <laughs> and, it, and I felt the same about him. But he said, Mary Ellen Costello went to him and said, and I quote, Bill, why don't you reconsider that skinny black guy from Cheltenham? I think he may be a diamond in the rough. <laughs> I tell this story because it is what 
Ms. Costello did for me that day is symbolic of who she is every day. She is not merely a teacher, but an educator who through the years has garnered a reputation as a caring and thoughtful leader who is well respected in and out the classroom. She follows the doctrine of Hedger who said, a flower does not bloom. He said, when a flower does not bloom, you fix the environment in which it grows, not the flower. And this is symbol of Ms. Costello because she sees the best in those who come, who she comes into contact with even when others cannot or refuse to see the same. It is Ms. Costello's commitment to provide the best education to all her students, regardless of their academic ability, social affiliation, or status. She has been a true advocate for children and math education. Having served as math chair during my tenure as principal, Ms. Costello is always looking for the, the best programs and strategies to meet the needs of our students. While over the years she has become one of my best friends, she has equally become one of my best critics as she has always put the, what is best for children in the forefront of every decision she made. William Arthur Ward said, a mediocre teacher tells, the good teacher explains, the superior teacher demonstrates, but it is the great teacher who inspires. Thank you, Ms. Costello, for inspiring thousands of students to have the confidence in being great students and citizens. Thank you for inspiring educators like me to be educators who, who are thinking beyond just their own personal needs, but are putting children first. And thank you for leaving RTSD in a better place. We're grateful and thankful for your service, dedication, and more importantly, your love. Thank you so much. It's been an honor and privilege to work here for so many years, 28 years, to be a tiny part of so many children's lives. I leave with great love for this place called Radnor and great uh, esteem for that elusive goal known as the Radnor Way. Thank you. And now, could Peggy Boyd come up, please? <laughs> on behalf of Radnor School Board, I would like to congratulate you on your retirement and all they've done for us, for all the children, and for the parents, and for the community. So, thank you. Oh, sorry. We don't want anybody to think that Peggy got the short end of the deal here. She, did, she didn't get a plaque. She got a chair and a blanket to attend every Radnor game. I, I Almost every Radnor game. More on the beach. More on the beach. <laughs> She'll be back sitting in the art show. She'll be in the, uh, sitting down looking at all the art. Um, so when I came to Radnor six years ago, one of the first people I met was uh, Peggy Boyd. Um, when I came, Radnor, or Ele Wayne Elementary was under construction. They were getting their HVAC done. And I remember uh, walking through and getting yelled at by someone. She probably, I don't know if you remember that or not. No, I don't remember. Um, but I got yelled at by someone, and it was Peggy Boyd, because I was walking through without a hard hat. <laughs> and you were not, that was against the rules. Um, but she was, get, she was already getting ready for the year. And this was in um, the beginning of August, and getting things into her room and everything. If you've ever seen Peggy's room, it is filled with a lot of stuff, but a lot of neat stuff. Um, there's two things that stand out about Peggy, though. Um, her love for learning and building a community. And that came through the very first day I walked through the doors. Um, to the point that she told me every time I saw her, when are you coming in to make a project with the kids? And I got that question over and over and over until I finally came in to make a project with the kids. And I'm glad I did um, because it was w such a wonderful experience. From the introduction of an art lesson all the way to the creation of a project. And you saw the pride in the students' faces as they created these projects that Peggy had taught them all about. So it was just amazing to watch. And that building community, all I can say is B. <laughs> Peggy enjoys being the B mascot um, at Wayne. 
She helped develop the swarm board, do the, um, all of the bulletin boards throughout the school and designing those. Um, your participation during International Week and always helping the PTO and um, decorating and designing and to display that country on hand. Um, but it, it's just amazing. Um, every year, Peggy would come and, and was always open to new ideas, though. It wasn't we are just going to do this, but rather what can we do more and new and better for the kids. Um, the Artists in Res Residence projects, I only got to do one with you, but the other one is the, the door separation from the little theater to the cafeteria and the, uh, the mural that is outside, the mosaic that's outside the front entrance of the school. So Peggy, your mark will always be on that school for sure and, and the love that you had for those students and the projects that you, um, that you did. So we send you off with great joys. Um, I know one of your goals is to not wake up anywhere on this side of the earth on the first day of school because I know you, you would be forced, you're forcing yourself to go in yeah. and be with the kids. <laughs> so it's a good, good goal. So I wish you the best. We wish you the best. And thank you for your 36 years of service to this district. And we wish you well. I don't really know where to start except for the fact that um, this was a very difficult decision for me to make. Um, I called it the battle between my head and my heart, and my head told me why I should retire and things I'll do and look forward to as a retired teacher, but my heart is teaching art to the children. And I can't thank Radner enough for giving me the opportunity to explore my passion and, and to just do what I love and teach art to the children and be part of the Radnor community. Um, I'm gonna miss what I call the love notes from my students when you get notes that say, you make my day magical. Uh, you're the best art teacher ever. That's from a kindergartner. Um, so how many kinder art teachers have they had? Um, but I think one of the best notes um, came from a student who said that I was the goddess of paint, the ruler of clay, and the hardest working specialist in the district. Um, so the, from the goddess of the art room, thank you, Radner, for so many years. I did forget one thing, and, and, and this is, uh, I apologize, but just the adventure person that Peggy is, not only is she retiring, she just got engaged to a wonderful man here, Vince, who, Vince was part of our fit Wayne family because every art show that was going on, he was there hanging until 9, 10 o'clock at night. So I can't say enough to say thank you to the both of you and well wishes and enjoy every moment, so. Chuck, do you want to? Okay. Sure, sure. The recommendation is that the board adopt the following resolution. Upon the retirement of our fantastic, wonderful, energetic, young, stupendous teachers, after so many years, I can't count them, <laughs> of faithful service to the Radnor Township School District and to the children of the community, the Board of School Directors hereby records its sincere appreciation and unreserved commendation for these years of service of diligent devotion to professional responsibilities. In public recognition of this service, this citation is presented by unanimous vote of the Board of School Directors at its meeting on June 27th, 2017, and is recorded in the proceedings of the meeting. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Second. All those in favor? Hey, wait, board discussion? A board discussion. Could we, could we please name all the retirees who, uh, even uh, though yeah, we many were unable to make tonight, today's meeting? That's correct. The first one threw me off because Teresa, I've known by Terry, so. <laughs> Terry Borden, H. Bannard Ackerman, Banny Ackerman. I actually had a uh, great-grandmother named Banny. Uh, 
Sylvia Blake, Margaret Peggy Boyd, Mary Ellen Costello, Patricia Donnelly, Michael Grover, Francine Grossman, Joselyn Grover, Austin Uton, uh, Teresa Kelly, Patricia Talone, and Barbara Wade. All right, call the vote. Okay, now we'll call the vote. <laughs> All those in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. <clears throat> Our next recognition this evening is for the girls lacrosse team at Radnor High School who won the PIAA Class AA State Championship. The Radnor High School girls lacrosse team won the PIAA Class AA State Lacrosse Championship for the first time since 2010 with a 20 to 8 victory over Kennard Dale High School on June 10th at Westchester East High School. Senior attacker Julianne Puckett scored nine goals in the championship game, the most ever in a PIAA game. The team entered the state tournament as District 1 Class 2A champions and defeated York Catholic 13-6, Villa Maria 28, and Bishop Shanahan 4-3 to reach the state championship game. The members of the team are <laughs> seniors Eliza Azarano, who is here, Sophie Breedveld, Grace Gallagher, Natalie Jr., Allison Lanzone, Nicole Massimino, Lindsay McShay, Julianne Puckett, Hope Smith, and Alexa Solomon, who is here. Juniors are Kat Belleville, Carly Goldstein, and Katie Pelton. The sophomores are Kate Cox, Sarah Beth Lanzone, and Brooksy Perrin Hee. And freshmen are Riley Jacobs, Missy Massimino, Ellie Mueller, and Phoebe Proctor. The team is coached by Brooke Fritz, Jesse Martin, and Katie McGuire. The superintendent, along with the school board and the Radnor community, congratulates these student athletes, their parents, their coaches, on this outstanding achievement. And I just, as a personal note, want to say I love doing this because I have watched many of these girls from the time they were very little practicing on the sidelines as they were watching their older brothers play with my kids. So it is, uh, it's truly a, a, a lovely honor to see how far they've come and to recognize them in this way. So let me present uh, Eliza with a certificate of recognition and... Alexa, with yours. Thank you so much for being here. Congratulations and well done. Are uh, Payson Burt and Sam Malik here? You guys want to come up? <laughs> come on up and join me. Okay. We'd like to honor our two bus drivers for participating in the rodeo, and Mr. Hearn is here, our Director of Transportation. 
Uh, the uh, five Radnor Township School District bus drivers competed in the 19th annual Delaware County School Bus Rodeo on April 22nd at the Delaware County Intermediate Unit in Morton, PA. Due to the high scores, their high scores in the competition, Payson Burt and Sam Malik advanced to the 41st annual Pennsylvania School Bus Driver Safety Competition at Mount Nittany Middle School in State College, PA on June 23rd and June 24th. The competition assesses drivers through a written and practical exam on the vehicle's rules and safety regulations. Participants also compete in a skills competition, which includes physical and verbal bus inspection and the completion of basic moves such as making a controlled right turn, backing up a simulated student bus stop, driving through narrow clearances, a railroad crossing, parallel parking, and more. Safety competitions have proven to be one of the most effective instructional tools to improve a person's driving skills. The state school bus driver safety competition emphasizes the following objectives. One, to motivate reinforcement of learning and implementation of good practices involved in superior job performance as a school bus driver. To recognize excellence and provide for demonstration of the skills and responsible performance of the demanding job of the school bus driver to develop public awareness of the skills and responsibilities involved in the job of a school bus driver, to encourage communication between drivers to share awareness and experience. The superintendent, along with the board and the Radnor community, congratulates Payson and Sam, along with their families and the entire transportation department, on this outstanding achievement. And I'd just like to say, can you imagine trying to parallel park a, how long are those things, 40, 42, <laughs> foot, 42 feet long or something? I mean, that in itself, you should all get an award and driving around with 48 kids behind you. You're back to them, as Gabe was pointing out earlier. So. Liz, where are you? So it is time for the fourth honor tonight, and that is the resolution of appreciation for retiring student representatives. The resolution of appreciation below has been prepared in recognition of the service of Liz Dustin, who has served as student representative to the Government Relations and Communications Committee of the School Board, and John Moeller, who has served as student representative to the Policy Committee of the School Board. The recommendation is that the Board adopt the following resolution of appreciation in recognition of the service rendered by retiring student representatives Liz Dustin and John Moeller. Whereas Liz Dustin and John Muller have served the school district of Radnor Township, Delaware County, Pennsylvania, as student representatives to the school board's government relations and communications committee and policy committee respectively. And whereas during that time they have represented the students of Radnor, presenting ideas and positions that have furthered the cause of effective and responsive educational principles and practices within Radnor Township School District and whereas they have brought to their respective committees an interest in service to education and a spirit of cooperation. Now therefore be it resolved that in appreciation for their service, the members of the Board of School Directors hereby recognize and honor Liz Dustin and John Muller on this 27th day of June, 2017. And, um, <laughs> Many of you have heard of John Madden. He's the color analyst for football. So I was asked to throw a little color into this uh, situation that we're having here. You don't, don't feel any pressure. I don't feel any pressure. I don't feel any pressure. <laughs> anyway, this was a new experience, not only for the, the students, but also for the board to bring into meetings students who are right there in the front line and give them an opportunity to participate. And we would often 
sometimes ask questions that the students may not have been prepared for because of how the meeting went. And our students really uh, stepped forward, uh, gave us the answers, came back to us if they didn't know what they were. They could check with the, with the student uh, council. They could check with other students and come back and give us answers. We really do appreciate that because it allows us to make better decisions if we know what's really going on. And the contribution that you gave to us was enormous. And i like to thank you as the co-chair of the, of the government side and this is communication I'm side. I'm the co-chair of the- Co-chair. Of the communication side? You're the communication side and okay. I'm the- I don't know whether we, did, yeah, I think that's the way it goes. Whatever, but, it works. But anyway, yeah. thank you very much. And, and Liz, I just say wanted to say, I think to okay, echo, echo Chuck, that um, we have a wonderful committee um, and that is enhanced by the voices of a student and we also have a teacher representative. And you really do help us think through things in the way we should, which is through the prism of our students, our staff, and our entire community. So thank you for being willing to take part in experiential learning and government right here. We hope it served you well. We will miss you. It was a pleasure to see you at our meetings and can't thank you enough for participating with us all. And here is your certificate. Uh, that's fine. No, okay. Okay. Do you want to see them? Sure. Um, I just want to thank Radnor Township so much um, on my behalf and also John's behalf. Um, it's been such an honor to represent our high school, on, especially on my board. Um, this was such a new experience for me, and I've gained so much confidence just working with people who are so experienced, and this has been so awesome. Thank you so much. All right, we will now have public comment. Citizens are encouraged to address the board during public comment portions of the meeting on the agenda or on other topics related to our school district. Print your name, please, on the sign-in sheet at the table in the back of the room. Clearly state your name, address, and the topic to be addressed. Individual comments shall be limited to, to not more than four minutes as per board policy. And if you are unable to be here with us today, you may submit your comment by email to boardquestions at rtsd.org or in written form to Mr. Michael Petiti. And I will now entertain public comment. <laughs> Welcome, Liz. My name is Liz Duffy. Um, I live at 547 Hilaire Road. I am the mother of four children who all attend Radnor schools from the elementary school to the high school. Um, first, I just want to say um, how thrilled um, I was, and I'm sure uh, I know I speak on behalf of many, to hear that Dr. Stevenson was going to join Radnor Elementary as principal, or as proposed, I guess I don't know how it goes, but um, we are so thrilled to have him back at the school, he um, he does a remarkable job as an administrator whose the office is not at a school to always be present. I feel like he's omnipresent, um, but to have him back with the kids every single day with those flip flops, greeting everyone, the positive uh, you know the positive environment he creates, we're, we're thrilled. So, um, but I'm really here to talk about post prom. Um, I was. Um, part of Radnor High School post-prom. My daughter just graduated. Um, I had heard a lot about it. Um, I must say, probably from afar, I thought, wow, that's a lot that goes on to, for one night. And um, I have drank the Kool-Aid, and I think it is a fantastic tradition. It keeps our children safe, but we also wowed them in their school. Um, and I really felt the appreciation. And if you don't know, um, I'm sure, all, I hope all of you know, but I've heard that 99% of our seniors attend. And I think that's quite remarkable. And it's a really special gift we give them. 
I was part of the decorating committee, and um, that was quite an endeavor. And um, there was many, many long hours, and I just wanted to state, to make public comment, because I was singing our, um, our maintenance staff and janitorial staff's praises to Amy, and Amy said, you know, we hear that often, but it would be of great benefit to make it public. They are outstanding. I mean, the so above and beyond, so helpful, problem solving. I was there many a late night with the janitorial staff, and they were just so pleasant all the time. And then the maintenance, um, it could not have been, I mean, they were, Russell and Jermaine were like went above and beyond. They prepared all the ceilings throughout the school during the day when we couldn't get in there. So when we got in there, we could execute it quite quickly. Um, and Jermaine, I don't know, he came in, we called him with a question, and on a Saturday, he drove in with his young child from Delaware and spent over three hours on a day off to help us make it all happen. And I saw the pride they took in it as well, you know, and it was just really special. And so just hats off to them. I, um, I've always felt like all our schools glisten and look great all the time, and um, I just wanted to recognize them publicly. So thank you. Thank you, Liz. That was great. Thank you so much. <laughs> Hi, Sheila, welcome. Thank you. Um, I'm getting over a cold, so pardon the Joan Rivers voice I've got going here. Um, but I just wanted to um, just acknowledge Terry Borden as well. Um, I had the pleasure and the honor of working with her for several, oops, I'm moving this thing, for several years um, in the Radnor Elementary PTO. And um, one of the things that we did when Terry first came on board was to try to foster a little more communication between parents and the school. And um, we called it direct dialogue. And Terry would get out and you know answer questions. And if there was a particularly hot agenda item that parents wanted to talk about, she would talk about it. And later, um, we thought, gee, maybe we should have called this how to put your principal on the firing line. Uh, but Terry was a gamer. And she let us put a, a cardboard cutout of her so that we could do some marketing. And unfortunately, when we had that made, it wasn't like life size, it was a little short. So uh, it was named, nicknamed uh, Little Terry when we'd put it out there and the kids all loved it. And, um, and again, Terry would put on any sort of costume that she thought the kids would think was funny. And uh, Cruella DeVille was one of them. Um, but her ultimate focus was on the kids. And to her, it was always about the kids. And sometimes, you know, there were some unpopular, you know, decisions that she had to make or stands that she had to take. But it was about the kids. And I remember her saying that if she's ever having a bad day, you could find her in a kindergarten classroom. That's where she'd get rejuvenated. Um, so I just want to thank you for the 22 years that you've done for Radnor and the 10 years at Radnor Elementary. And uh, best of luck in your new endeavor. Thank you so much, Sheila. Hi, Judy. Welcome. Thank you. Judy Sherry, Governor's Circle, Newtown Square. Uh, before I begin, I too want to recognize all the valuable employees uh, that are retiring and how much they've given to our students and our schools. And I guess tonight, too, I was really blown away with the bus driver award because that test sounded like it would really be amazing to watch. So if there was ever an opportunity for bus drivers to demonstrate their skills closer to home, I hope they let the public know about, about it. Uh, my next comments, however, are about the business aspect of this meeting and not the recognition aspect. Uh, first of all, the financial attachments. According to the May financial revenue summary, real estate tax revenue was up by about $4,100,000, representing a 6.1%, 1-2% increase. Since there were no real capital expenditures or significant ones this year, 
could board members reflect on this amount and at some point quantify briefly what educational improvements were purchased by that increase? Uh, next agenda item, district goals. Goals should follow the SMART SMART model. Specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time sensitive. Many of these posted goals appear to be way too broad. For example, challenge and support, support all students. And how do you achieve, achieve or fail to meet goals when your measurements of success are not measurable? They are reviews, assessments, identifying issues, etc. They are ways to achieve goals. Goals need to be measurable. Agenda item number six. Although some staff changes, and this is the um, organizational chart, it's a new one. And although some staff changes are listed under agenda item number 35, whoops, I guess it's my number six, number 35, it would be helpful to have a list of the assigned administrative staff attached to the new organizational chart and a summary of why changes were made in assigned responsibilities. For example, the director of operations was eliminated. In the past, that position was held by Leo Burnaby, a highly regarded and well-paid administrator who was given hundreds of thousands of dollars in retirement benefits to convince him to continue for another year in this position while full day kindergarten was being implemented. Why is that position no longer needed? Agenda item number 23, Longstreth Sporting Goods has again been awarded a bid from the district, although the owner of Longstreth John Schaefer is an employee of the district. Is that a conflict of interest? Number 24, regarding educational placements of students in other or alternative schools. Over the years, there seems to be a large and ever-growing number of Radnor Township students placed outside the district, often in private schools, at a significant expense. Is the school board monitoring this trend? Is this really the best approach, both monetarily and educationally, for Radnor students and those that are reassigned? 27 is approval for student trips. After years of requests, there is still no apparent progress on developing guidelines for the district to fund trips equitably. What can we ex when can we expect this issue to be resolved by the administration? Number 31, policies requesting approval without a second reading. There are many reasons why policy should have two readings before approval. At the last policy meeting on June 13th, only two of the four committee members were present. And one of the two, Susan Stern, proposed many changes to two policies, policy 203, communicable diseases and immunization, and policy 808, food services. Now board members are expected to rubber stamp these policies with one reading and only two board members reviewing them publicly, and I might add tonight there are only six board members here, so we're missing three board members. What is the quorum, or is there a quorum, required for committee meetings? Would this be acceptable if only one board member was present? The newly written meetings policy does not contain any quorum requirements for committees. Although clearly, committees make decisions and recommendations. For example, the Citizens Advisory Council was approved by the Finance Committee. Other matters. It was disappointing that, again, enrollment was not sufficient to teach Mandarin this year, although it's been offered two years in a row. What's the explanation? Is it a lack of interest? Is it scheduling? Is it the absence of a middle school introduction similar to all the other world languages? Will there be any future changes suggested by the administration to create a better outcome? Concussions. What recommendation does the administration have to prevent long-term cognitive dangers 
like chronic traumatic encephalopathy to children exposed to harmful head injuries while playing sports? Is there any consideration to eliminating tackling during football practice or heading during soccer practice? I don't know if we have eliminated any of those. And finally, <clears throat> what's the educational impact and, impact and cost of full day kindergarten? Radnor is one of the very few districts in this area offering this program. Is the administration monitor, monitoring it on a yearly basis? Thank you. Thanks, Judy. Hi, Roberta, welcome. Thank you, Roberta Winters, 326 Williams Road in Rosemont. And as a retired teacher, I would be uh, welcome those recognized teachers th this evening to a life beyond the classroom. And I would be remiss if I did not share that these individuals not only have taught students, but also their <laughs> colleagues. And I am forever grateful for the lessons I learned from each of them. In addition to the teachers being recognized this evening, I would wish to note for the public that there were also support staff that were also on the agenda. And Sylvia Blake, in particular, for many years, kept my classroom clean and tidy. So it's hats off, as Miss Liz said, and it's just add to her chorus that we should continue to recognize our custodial and maintenance staff. Thank you. Thank you, Roberta. Hi, Cindy, welcome. Thank you. Cindy Spurtle, 106 Valley Forge Terrace, Wayne. Well, I will add to all the other um, thanks and congratulations to those retiring. 271 years is the total number of years represented, and that's really remarkable. And it speaks for the good school district that Redner is. So thank you to all of those retirees. And looking at the agenda this evening, I'd like to um, Ms. Sherry spoke to the district goals. I had a few specific questions uh, as reviewing the goals. And also I had a concern on how exactly the goal of challenge and support of all students, which is the role of the teachers and the staff at Radnor, would be measured because um, the analyzing, reviewing, discussing, implementing are um, ways of achieving that measure of success, but exactly what will the measure be, the measures be when the goals are reached. Um, under goal number two, revised administrative structure, thank you for the organizational chart, which I believe at this point is now up to date. The question I had was uh, in the timeline for achievement of this organizational chart, which is listed as September of this year, does that mean that there'll be further review of the chart and there may be a new chart coming as part of these goals? And also, um, it would be very interesting to see the job descriptions that are written for each one of these positions. And also on um, goal number three, evaluate the one-to-one -one technology at high school. Uh, will the CAC continue to be involved, at least in the financial evaluation of the... Um, technical instruments that are given to the students. Um, proceeding on then to just a quick, and this may be one reason why it's important to have maybe more than one reading was, was brought up before on the policies, just a few little item number 11 uh, re mentions the attached spreadsheet for the district insurance renewal rates. The attached spreadsheet was not attached to the public copy of the attachments. Maybe the board received it. Be interesting to see that. Um, and then I just had a question because when the bus, this is item number 17 on the consent ag agenda, the award for the propane buses uh, is being recommended. And I know that there's a program or a plan for replacement of buses that I've learned the the few years that I've been attending the meetings. I noticed that there was uh, originally solicited bids for four buses and the decision was to purchase two plus the special bus. And uh, my question is, 
will that mean that the originally planned and programmed replacement of all buses, does that stay on schedule? Because this year we will only be purchasing two, not four. Um, a question that may seem strange, but it popped into my mind on item number 20, the meal prices. It says that um, su sufficient revenues can be raised from meal prices to meet anticipated expenses for the upcoming year. Is the management fee paid the management company? Is that included in those costs? I don't know why I thought of that, but we mentioned the management company that's running the operation at one of the committee meetings. And then I, too, uh, on item number 24, had the concern. It seems to me that there's an increase in the alternative placements um, for this year to come. And I'm wondering if that the board will monitor these, not only for financial reasons, but also because of the best interest. Is, are these new placements the best interest of the students? Uh, being involved with a, a special needs student and across, living across the street from one, I know how important it is to remain in the community and to develop friendships uh, with those who are your neighbors for these uh, special students. And uh, the no, item number 25, there are, these are all services to be provided. It's a request for approval of related service providers. And um, these are for consultants, for psychologists, et cetera. And I appeared that they are all renewals. And the question was, are we renewing at the same cost to the district that we paid last year, or is this an increase? for the 17-18 uh, school year. And one other question was on the whereas in the, um, the final continuing authorization that the board is going to give to the uh, staff for new hires. And the question I had, the first paragraph is, whereas there are a number of existing but vacant positions that need to be filled this summer, this authorization does not include the authority to create new staff positions just for those that have already been authorized. My question is, um, why not identify the vacant positions in this authorization? And one quick question, the last paragraph mentions uh, the, that the hires will be within the parameters of the respective collective bargaining agreement or Act 93, and my question is, what is Act 93? I looked it up online, and when I did, uh, benefits popped up, but it appears that it may be another of the organization's bargaining units of the district. Thank you. Thanks, Cindy. Hello, Dave. Welcome. How's everybody tonight? I uh, think we're fine. <laughs> Dave Wood, President, Radnor Township Education Association. Um, I just wanted to uh, thank all of those that are retiring tonight or retiring previously for their service to Radnor Township School District from uh, administrators to uh, teachers to custodians to maintenance people to whoever it is that works with our students. And I think a lot of times we don't remember that each and every one of them works with our students on it and has contact with our students on a daily basis. And I think that's really important to, to remember. And one of the things that makes Radnor the place it is, is that we have consistent people in our buildings all the time for our students to interact with. And I think not every school in this area does that. And I think that, that helps to keep our district really special. Um, seeing the same people every day is really important for our students from, like I said, from the bus drivers. My son has the same bus driver that picks him up every day. And I don't think he missed a single day this year. And that's really important for a kid when they're walking out there to see the same face every morning. And I think it really helps begin the educational process. And I think sometimes we forget that every single person is part of that process that, that works as an employee for Radnor Township School District. So thank you to, to all of them. And especially thank you to the bus drivers for their great award. I think that's amazing. And I feel great that they're driving my kids to and from school. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Dave. Mr. Petiti, what do we have? Yes, I have an emailed comment from Laura Ferran of RESPA. On behalf of RESPA, we celebrate the contribution of our retiring members. Fran Grossman was a fixture of happiness for the students at the RMS library, and Ter Terry Kelly, who cares so much for and about the students who visited the health suite. 
We were lucky to work among them. On a personal note, 16 years ago, Terry Borden was my own son's IST case manager and helped me navigate a new world and understanding his unique way of learning. He's now a 21-year-old college senior. Thank you for your devotion to my boy and all the kids of Radnor. Thank you. All right, uh, it's time for reports from board committees. Um, committee chairpersons may report on items pertinent to the agenda or of general importance to board business. Um, we'll take this quickly. I, I will go first as chair of the curriculum committee. We met on Tuesday, June 20th in the ground floor conference room and discussed the following, health textbooks. Um, we had a lengthy presentation of new health textbooks by Dr. Kelly Murray and elementary health teacher Deb Kaiser, and we reviewed materials and we have re uh, recommended that we move that item forward and it is in today's consent agenda. Um, we also had a discussion about the Radnor Middle School bell schedule and Mrs. Purnell presented the revised schedule. Um, this was based on data collection, parent-teacher survey, and meetings with the building scheduling committee. And the administration is currently recommending some minor modifications to last year's schedule. One minute has been added to each instructional period, and the advisory period was moved to the beginning of the day, and the extended learning time was moved to the end of the day. Uh, the Encore classes were also stacked at opposite ends of the day to allow for a more efficient uh, sharing of staff across our schools. Um, and that's, I think, it for me. Um, Next. Sorry, Lydia. Thank you. The Facilities Committee also met on Tuesday, June 20th. There were three items on our agenda two of which are on tonight's agenda for board vote. The first item on the facilities committee agenda was a presentation of the school district facilities use policies. Um, and this will, I believe, appear on our August agenda, but we just got um, an update on it. The second item on the facilities committee agenda was an update on the bids one of which it was for the high school auditorium. This is item 13 on your agenda tonight for $30,690 to applied video technology. There was also um, an update on the bids for the propane buses. This is item 17 on your agenda for $280,600 to purchase three buses. The third item on the Facilities Committee agenda was a discussion of the summer projects at the various buildings, one of which was the change orders, which you will see as item 28 on your agenda tonight for um, Wayne Elementary School and Ethan Elementary School for a total of $54.30. Uh, the Facilities Committee unanimously recommends the support of these agenda items. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, finance, and I will quickly go over that in Mrs. Booker's absence. Um, she's in Germany. The Finance Committee met on Tuesday, June 20th, uh, again in the ground floor conference room, and we talked about the following. Public Financial Management, PFM, and RBC Capital Markets uh, gave us a presentation on the potential benefit of converting district, uh, the district's variable Delaware Valley 2000 general obligation note to a fixed rate. Although the variable rate notes have performed well for the district, the interest rates are very low, so now may be the time to convert that over. And so the committee asked PFM and RBC to explore options and report back. Um, so we will be talking about that again in August. Um, Mrs. Deco reported that the 2016-17 fiscal year end was rapidly approaching, and we have our auditors uh, scheduled to come in at the end of July and the beginning of September and the end of September. We also talked about the CAC, the Citizens Advisory Committee. And uh, Ms. Deco gave us five potential projects for the CAC, all of which we were in favor of, although this is not necessarily an exclusive list. Um, district capital planning, district contracted services, district real estate holdings and facility usage, the National School Lunch Program, and Mrs. Sherry will be happy to hear TRIP funding. 
Um, Ms. Deco indicated the extent, uh, the intent was to have CAC do a broad overview of the topics and provide feedback to the district on which topics we should concentrate on during the next school year, uh, fiscal year. Topics align with district goals and we are going to be presenting those as well. And we approved uh, the project, those projects and they will be further discussed and refined. We also had finally an update on our substitute teachers. Mr. Stitzel reviewed the monthly report. May was a high absentee month. Um, the committee asked if the district were able to identify any trends regarding these absentees and the response was no. Uh, the committee recommended changes to the report and curriculum. the curriculum committee will also be involved in this as we go forward periodically. Uh, and that's it. Um, policy. Yes, me. <laughs> Uh, we were super busy this month. Um, there's a lot, as you know, in your packet, and here's why. Um, we are presenting for first read uh, 210 medications, um, and that is a complete overhaul of the exist existing policy. It incorporates policy uh, 210.1, which is possession, use of asthma inhalers and epinephrine auto injectors. It adds language for a Narcan um, and for diabetic management language. Um, it was intended for a request to waive the second reading, but the changes were so vast. So what we're going to do is we are going to um, bring it back for a second read, and we are going to keep the current language in the school handbooks with a notation in the section that it's under review. And that will be digital, I believe, right? So that shouldn't be uh, too much of a problem. Uh, policies for second reading include 903 communications. Uh, that was developed through the Government Relations and Communications Committee. And upon approval, it will replace uh, policy 901, public relations objectives, and policy 911, news media relations. Um, and then three policies that we're presenting for first read and requesting the second reading be waived. Uh, I will tell you why we're doing that, because to Mrs. Sherry's point, it's not ideal. Um, there are laws that we need to uh, comply with by the end of June, and uh, nobody was sleeping on the job. It's just the way things turned out, and that's why we're doing it this way. That includes um, 203, Communicable Diseases and Immunization, and it's going to bring the immunization requirements in compliance with federal guidelines. 808, which is food services. It requires revisions due to new USDA rules that school districts establish written meal charge requirements. You may have heard about meal shaming. It's to avoid all that. And finally, 918, which is parent involvement. And the primary change is just to change the language from parent involvement to parent engagement, because that mirrors uh, Title I language. And that's it. Excellent. Thank you. Government relations and communications. Amy and Chuck. We did not have a committee meeting in June. Oh, all right. We'll now go in advance to our priority discussion and action items. Um, the first is request for approval of the 2017-18 district goals. Mr. Batchelor. Thank you. Um, I'll put up a PowerPoint quickly. I want to share with the board uh, a very quick presentation that I had the opportunity to share uh, with all of the faculty and staff at the conclusion of the school year. Um, what I'd like to take a moment to share is just some summary information uh, from some of the things that I have learned as part of the transition here uh, to Radnor. Uh, I began, uh, was it January 30th, beginning of February? Uh, I have kidded that I've, I feel like I have dove in and feel part of the community. So uh, in a good way, it feels longer than that, though it has been just a few quick, <laughs> short months, and I mean that in a good way. But this was a presentation that was shared with the faculty and invited the board members to attend. It was at the end of the school year, and I know many of you were had conflicts since it was during the school day, but I wanted to share it here, both for the school board and for the public. So if we move to the next slide. Um, one of the things that uh, my focus was as I began here as superintendent was to listen and to learn um, through different uh, opportunities, focus groups, meetings, just being present at different events, uh, to talk to different people about what are the strengths of Radnor, what are the challenges of Radnor School District. Uh, I did a survey as well besides the discussions of both our, of, of our students, of our parents, of our faculty, of our uh, support staff, uh, and everything was focused on what are our strengths, what are our challenges, uh, what are the areas that we need to make improvements, what are the things we want to hold on to, and anything else uh, that people wanted to share with me. Uh, some of the most valuable conversations I had were sometimes just in the hallway. Um, I wish Mary Ellen was still here. One of the conversations I had with Mary Ellen Costello uh, being in the high school one afternoon and her sharing with me 
uh, some of her insight on the our mathematical program and what has been taking place in the district over the years. She's been here from both middle school and high school and that just how valuable I found uh, all those different opportunities for feedback. And it's still going on. It's not done and it's something I have also uh, shared with our administrative team that the opportunity to gather feedback and have focus groups, whether it's students, whether it's parents, uh, is something that we want to keep as part of our, our routine practice. Uh, meeting with a group of high school students and having giving them an opportunity to, you know, share the things about Radner um, was really beneficial. And uh, and and the students are, are just brutally honest with so many things. And if you go to the next slide, um, when we start talking about the strengths of the district, uh, I, I was taken aback by one of the high school students who had shared with me the pride they have in being a student in Radnor. And this was a student who uh, is a junior who was sharing the pride they have as a junior, but the pride they've had through all their years uh, as a student of Radnor. And that just struck me, um, you know, how that student just had that, that sense of pride of being a student here and what it meant to be part of this community. You can see from the list of strengths, and these are just themes that I identified um, from all those different resources. Some of them are direct quotes from different people. But you can see that we could, you know, we should really just stop here and end this meeting and all go home because that's the way we should all start the summer off. Uh, there are just so many wonderful strengths. We heard it tonight and we saw that with our retirees. You heard it in the comments of our retirees about how, what a special place uh, Radnor is. Um, it is an amazing, uh, wonderful community to be part of. It is a community that um, values education. Uh, they value um, and, and support what is happening for our children and the importance for the children in this, in this district. Um, so you can see from just a few of those quotes and those different things, uh, you know, what I've identified is just some of those strengths as, and, and I could go on for uh, several slides with the strengths of the district. Um, the next one is I listed some themes and areas of challenges. And in many ways, some of our strengths actually is what leads us into some of our challenges. Uh, some of those strengths that we have, um, you know, being a, a very successful district, being a district that uh, cares so much and is, is so involved, also leads to some of the challenges. Uh, it was no surprise that some of my surveys and discussions were happening during the budget season. Um, so the budget came up often as, a, as a, an area of challenge and concern. Um, people are concerned in the district, whether it's our staff, whether it's uh, some, of our, some in our community, that we're going to become complacent, uh, that a district like ours that has had much success, how do we continue to grow as a district? Uh, how do we make sure that we place an emphasis on the importance of continual improvement? Um, our administrative structure came up very loud and clear uh, as something that we needed to look at as a district as we look at uh, continuing to grow and improve, making sure we have consistent expectations and communication, that we build trust, that we have the ability as a district to talk about difficult things and have those discussions and be able to disagree without being disagreeable. Um, you know, I think is a challenge for us as a district because people are very passionate and people really care about it. And sometimes that passion caring makes it harder for us to disagree. Um, so there was some of these things that I was able to share with our, our faculty in, in that end of year meeting. If you go to the next slide, I also shared with our faculty, I had a, a um, uh, I had for our faculty, I shared a, a drawing that I don't have here in, the, in this PowerPoint, but a drawing of a pressure cooker. Uh, and not to say that the district is a pressure cooker, but I listed a lot of different issues in this picture of a pressure cooker. And I talked about the challenge of pulling items out of the pressure cooker. And we need to be able to talk about things and say we want to evaluate something without all the other items splashing and hitting the ceiling all at once. We can't fix or can't address or can't evaluate every program all at once, but we have to have a systematic way on how we continually improve our programs. Um, so we need to be have focus and focus on what is most important. We need to be, what I talked to the faculty about is be able to pull items out of the pressure cooker without everything overflowing all at once and hitting the ceiling. We have to be comfortable evaluating our programs and asking questions about why we do things. Uh, and again, that quote, as I shared already, uh, be clear with our communications and our expectations and outcomes. And at the time, I was speaking to actually everybody. All, um, all of our employees were invited to, that, uh, to this meeting, to this presentation. So it was all of our teachers, our support staff, our bus drivers were invited, our administration, the board were invited. And that we need to realize that there is an incredible amount of expertise in this district. Again, we saw that tonight with our retirees and that we need to be able to look to that expertise that we have in this district as we continue to grow and look to areas to improve. 
Uh, so that leads us to, uh, well, leads us to a, a journey of continuous improvement. So it was a, a picture I shared with them about, uh, you know, stop asking if we're almost there, if it's a little blurry, you know, um, you know, we're nomads for crying out loud. It is the journey that we have to be on a journey of continuous improvement. It's not about we've done this, we've completed it. We have to have be in that practice of being in a journey of continuous improvement, re-evaluating our programs, looking to make adjustments. That's not to mean that we're going to change every moment. I think one of the challenges this district has had is that sometimes we've been too eager probably to jump on uh, whatever was the latest fad in education in because we're passionate, because we want to make a, a difference with our kids. And I think we have to give ourselves the opportunity to have a little bit more focus uh, in this journey. Let me go to the next slide. So m there's many things that we're doing really well in the district that we don't have to reinvent the wheel. When we look at our district goals, we look at our mission, we already have a very clear mission. We have clear uh, goal areas that have been identified through the work of a large group of our community over the last few years through our comprehensive plan. We have district goal areas. Um, those goal areas, I think, are important lenses for us to look at as we develop and identify, though, what tasks we want to work on each year. And if we go to the next slide, um, here is a list of some of those things that I'm proposing we work on next year and that we give some focus to. The concept of challenging and supporting all of our students. One of the things I heard loud and clear through the surveys and through discussions is that are we challenging each of our students at no matter what level they are appropriately? There is a fear and a concern that sometimes some of our resources are maybe spent at one end of the spectrum or another end of the spectrum. Are we missing out on those kids uh, in the middle? Are we making sure that we are challenging all of our students appropriately? Um, so we're going to ask each building uh, to begin working this summer and into the early fall working with their teachers to develop action plans, to set targets, to identify using data what are those areas that they want to make improvements and then we want to monitor that uh, throughout the school year and have them then share those, not only the action plans once they're developed, but the results of those action plans uh, at the end of next school year. We want to look to revise the administrative structure, uh, something that is on the agenda for tonight. Um, yes, we're getting a little bit ahead ourselves. We set a goal to have it completed by uh, uh, September. Uh, we're a little ahead on the goal. Um, the board can vote tonight on the new structure. We still need to take time this summer to develop the, um, uh, a lot of the job duties and protocols and responsibilities. So the specifics behind some of the responsibilities will be developed this summer, uh, and we will come back to the board and share that information. Uh, but it became very clear from our administrative team, from our uh, teachers, from our support staff, from our parents, uh, that we needed to look at our structure and that really we had unfinished work. Um, there was some adjustments and work that had begun over the last few years, and we needed to finish some of that work and make some adjustments that would help to lead us to be more efficient, uh, would also help uh, to give the district office the opportunity to give more direct support um, to uh, the individual buildings uh, and to really bridge that gap in any district. There's always a gap and a challenge between the district office and the buildings, uh, and we think this new structure will help do that, and I'll talk a little bit more about the structure uh, when we get to that piece of the, the next item on the agenda. Evaluating instructional technology is a goal that we already began. Uh, we talked about, uh, as part of my evaluation, a 90-day uh, listen and learn. I talked with the board, and I was the first to violate that, I think, by coming forward to the board and saying, okay, there's something we need to look at right away. I think it was uh, maybe 35 or 60 days into, whatever it was, uh, because we realized and we talked about at board um, curriculum committee meetings that we have a window of opportunity thanks to the work of our Citizens Advisory Committee and the work of our administration who came together to identify that it's time for us to evaluate uh, the one-to-one -one technology program that we have at the high school, both from an educational standpoint and a financial standpoint. So that work has already begun. We've set some targets for when those presentations and those recommendations need to happen, and that would be a district goal for next year. Uh, and also the fourth and final district goal is the evaluation of our middle school program. Um, middle schools across this country have gone under great change over the last 10, 15, 20 years. Our middle school over the last 10, 15 years has had a lot of changes. A lot of programmatic changes have happened. As those changes have happened, those changes create unintended consequences. Uh, it's time for us, and I use the analogy with um, the middle school faculty, and I think with the administrative team, it's, 
It's time for us to land the plane as best we can. Yes, we are going to start the school year and have a middle school program, but as best we can next year to engage our, um, our teachers, our administration, to engage our parents, our students, uh, the board in a discussion and a review of looking at our middle school program uh, under that idea of continuous improvement uh, and look at how we as a district continually improve. So those are four main areas that I'm putting forward as, as uh, goals for next year. There's also several priority areas uh, that I am going to recommend that each of the committees look into. This was the, the, the thank you and have a great summer. We left for all of the, uh, the teachers and, and the support staff from the presentation. But there are going to be other uh, priority areas. Um, some of those priority areas, first off, is, is the topic of student sleep. We're going to ask the curriculum committee um, to work with, and we're going to identify how we want to study this concept of student sleep. It is something that here in this district, uh, I think, began, I should know by now, it was almost a year and a half, two years ago, I think the work began uh, with some discussions with a, an administrative, you know, appointing a committee to begin looking at sleep. It's time for us as a district to take the opportunity to look at this issue of student sleep that's been uh, being discussed and studied throughout the, the country uh, and for us to make some decisions on what's appropriate for Radnor. Uh, and then my recommendation for all these things is to look at these things and make decisions and then be able to you know, move on with them as well. So there are topics like student sleep, topics such as recruitment selection and retention, uh, looking at our, some of our HR practices, our human resource practices. Um, Mrs. Michelson already mentioned that the Finance Committee has already begun on a, another area where it would be a priority project is looking at our Citizens Advisory um, Council uh, and looking at the next steps on, on how we would move forward with them and making sure that we as a district are always being good stewards of our resources. Uh, and then strategic communications would be another priority project uh, that we would look at through, again, our um, committee structure. Uh, and look at make sure we're developing a strong communications plan and communicating uh, all that we need to. And much of that work has already been, is begun by some of the work taking place in the communications committee. Um, and the committees will again identify other priority projects as we move forward. I have shared with the board, um, you know, a detailed list of the district goals uh, with some, you know, much more nuanced timelines and when the presentations uh, and those pieces with the board and that's been made public as well. So any questions from board members about district goals? All right. Well, I just have a question. Oh, yeah. there. We, have, we have discussed this a little bit, but it's a question that came up with the public. Uh, the SMART goals, you know, being a special education uh, teacher, that's all we, not all we do, but we do a lot of that piece. And the measurement, and I know in some of the goals that you do have, some of the how we can measure or the challenges. Can you just speak about that a little bit? Sure. Sure. So the the details for the challenging all students, make sure we're challenging all students, the buildings will be responsible for identi identifying what specific data and then also uh, identifying not only that data, then what are the specific targets that they're going to aim for and what are the uh, specific pieces that they're going to do to adjust to see how our students' learning is, is being impacted by it. Um, you know, for some of our goals, you know, for the one-to-one -one, um, analysis, uh, you know, the goal for the one-to-one -one analysis is to do a thorough review. You know, do a thorough review of, of both the educational impact of our one-to-one, -one, but also um, the, 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 the financial impact of that program, and then to bring those recommendations forward um, to the board. So the, for the what is going to be that target for that goal will be that there, you know, it's begun already by uh, the board has participated in identifying what are the specific questions for the one-to-one -one that we want to have answered. Uh, that was discussed, I think, a month or two ago at a public committee meeting where we identified what are those specific things we want answered that we want to know. So those, that's the identification of some of that, those, the data that we want to find. And then that committee will bring forward the answers to those specific questions. Going back to the challenging all students, there is a long list of specific data that has to be part of that. Whether we're looking at state assessment, we're looking at PVAS data, whether we're looking at our internal assessments and MAP, uh, we'll also be looking at um, you know, some anecdotal uh, data that doesn't necessarily pertain just to the state assessments. What's happening in structurally in the classroom and what are teachers identifying as markers to say that our kids are achieving um, whatever skill or item it is. Um, so that would be, does that help answer some of that? Ken, 
um, excuse yeah. me, I just wanted to add that um, I think the whole board appreciates the effort that you undertook, I think probably the whole community, to set goals for us. I think one of the things in the pressure cooker that you might not have mentioned um, that came up through, I think, comments in the administration and the faculty and the, and the board was that sometimes we're chasing a lot of different things and don't really have a very specific focus on a few. And by setting these goals and reporting out on them as we go throughout the year, I think we'll take that out of the pressure cooker, hopefully. So thanks for the exercise. And I think we're all looking forward to making some very specific and measurable progress over the course of the school year. I just have a comment about them, really. Um, so it seems to me that there, some of them are sort of compact, you know, sort of projects. Um, for example, to evaluate technology um, and to review basically the middle school program too, although a little bit broader in scope. It seems to me that goal number one um, is sort of on a different scope to, <laughs> to everything else you mentioned. So I just think the presentation of this is a little bit skewed because I think number one is what we, I mean, you did put continued, you know, obviously that's what we should do, that's what we should all be doing. And that really is the heart and soul of what our mission is. So I guess I'm a little just confused. You're going to present a plan to the board. I, I guess you just answered this to Chuck a little bit. But to me, that challenging all students and supporting all students, that's not something you know we're going to present to the board and then we're done in October. I mean, I just think the way this is presented, maybe we should say, um, what aspect of that? Because we should be challenging and supporting all students always, and that's not going to end. So it's just more <laughs> a comment. That's not really a succinct project like the other ones seem to be. Just throwing that out there. Yeah, no, I would agree 100% with you. That is something that is ongoing. Those benchmarks and dates, though, are just to try to give us an opportunity to, you know, for the buildings to, to establish the action plans, to share publicly here is the action plan, you know, to share with the board, to take the time to implement it. So that would be going on throughout the school year. So that even though there's a date in there, the actual action plan would be going on throughout the school year. Uh, and then some of the data that may be used, we would need the end of the school year. Um, you know, to acquire some of that data to, to do the final analysis. Any further comments? Ready to vote? All right. Um, district goals have been identified and are being presented for approval for 2017-18. These goals identify focus areas for the year there are additional priority projects which will be developed in individual board committees in 2017-2018. And may I have a motion to approve? So moved. And a second? All in favor? Motion carries. Thank you. Next, uh, the request for approval of the organization chart. Did you want to say anything further about that, um, Ken? Just quickly say that um, uh, one of the pieces, and I think I pretty much have uh, summarized it, but I just want to just share that uh, the organizational chart is something that we want to continually evaluate and look at, um, similar to the conversation we we're having before. Uh, I think you can hopefully see that version of it on the screen. Um, we want to continually evaluate it. Some of the changes I'm recommending for this year, um, we need to you know, look at at the end of this year and say, did this work? Um, I want to give some just details and just some specifics to some of the changes that we're recommending. Um, right now, um, we did have a director of operations. That position has not existed. It actually hasn't ha existed this entire school year. Uh, currently, our director of human resources and our business administrator, director of business, um, have been together sharing um, that overseeing that facilities and maintenance of the of the operations of the district. Um, we would ask that we're going to continue having the two of them do that for this coming school year, but that is an area that I'd like to study again uh, this coming school year in six months to a year or at some point during the school year, come back to the board with, you know, this current structure is working very well or this current structure needs adjustment. Um, uh, it may, you know, it is something that I, w I would like us to look at because I'm not, you know, 
confident right now to stand, to sit here and say to you that we've got that piece figured out. Um, so that's a piece that we're going to want to look at. I, I thank both, um, you know, Michelle and Todd for their work and their willingness to to handle that operations piece and facilities piece. Um, they've done that this year and they're willing to do that again uh, this coming school year, but we're going to take some time to look at that. Uh, we have also made some adjustments there as you look at the, the directors of um, uh, teaching and learning. Uh, we have a, a, an elementary director of teaching and learning and a secondary director, and then we have assistant directors. Um, those two assistant directors of teaching and learning will also provide support. Uh, we have two part-time assistant principal positions that are open. One is at Ithan Elementary and one is at Radnor Elementary. So one of those individuals will also be the part-time assistant principal at Ithan, and one will be the part-time assistant principal at Wayne. Currently, uh, a year ago, over a year ago, we had one person who would spend a couple of days a week at one building and a couple of days a week at another building. Now we're going to take the two, um, you know, directors of uh, the assistant directors of teaching and learning, and one of them will provide uh, that support, that assistant principal support, a few days a week at one building, and the other will provide it at the other building. Um, one of our reasons for doing that is that we wanted to give some of the support directly to the building. Um, we felt that we could also take some of the responsibilities that those two current individuals have within the curriculum department and share some of those responsibilities with other assistant pr principals in the district. Uh, for example, if we have an assistant principal who is a former art teacher, what better person to have maybe be the point person or the coordinator for art uh, curriculum K-12, to but then to have that assistant principal who's got experience in the field and also gives that assistant principal an opportunity to grow, an opportunity to see the program from a K-12 to level and help coordinate it. So it's not just a matter of having those two individuals support um, the buildings on top of what they already do. We've actually lightened some of that load and spread that out among some of the administrative team in the buildings. Again, our emphasis is we're trying to bring together um, what is happening when it comes to teaching and learning, um, the support that the district office can bring uh, to the buildings. Um, so that is all that that is the emphasis behind uh, that change. I think it will be a positive change. Um, and it also the, the I want to congratulate some of the administrators who came up with the idea and the, the discussion of calling it, you know, teaching and learning because that's all that is our focus. Lydia, you talk about what do we do each day, and, and that is our focus, teaching and learning. And for the district office, how do we support that each and every day uh, taking place in all of our buildings? So that's a nuanced piece in there that's hard to read necessarily from that diagram. Um, are there any other questions, board members, with the diagram? Questions? Um, more comment, <laughs> again. Um, I support this because I think as a new um, administrator in charge of this, we should have, we should support you in the kind of structure you want to design. Um, I just want to point out that I think this is a really different model and I understand why you're doing it. You want to put expertise out in the buildings. Um, I just want to say I think that it is difficult for a complex organization like this to sort of endure um, major changes. Somebody likened us to a big freight liner and we're, now we're trying to change course a little bit. And I think it's asking a lot of really committed, talented um, a lot people, you know, to sort of, you're putting them in really different roles. And so I just think we need to, to be appreciative of the fact that we're asking that of people. Um, and so again, I support this because I trust you to set this up, but I just think it's important to also acknowledge that we're asking a lot of our people, and um, you know, I, I think that we should be aware of that. I just want to add to Lydia's point. Um, I agree with you, um, but I appreciate so much how flexible and creative these people are in the positions. Um, other people, maybe I'd share Lydia's concerns, but um, and knowing that they're happy to do it and take it on uh, is very exciting to me. I know TE does that same model, and it's been working really nicely for them. So uh, I hope that makes you feel any better, Lydia. But um, I don't have the same concerns right now. I think it's a great plan. <laughs> and I, I think um, what we do have to realize is that as we're going through this and you see something that needs to change, it can be changed. Mm -hmm. 
because I do agree with you uh, with the maintenance department piece, and we're looking at that, and we're going to continue to look at that. Um, so that's something that the board is giving you enough leeway with to say, let's look at this, let's see how it's working, and when you believe it should move in a different direction or it should stay the same, then we can change the color of that square. <laughs> okay. That would, be, that would be the one thing. Also, I'd like you to talk a little bit about another group of people that we have in our um, elementary schools, the coaches, and the support that they give the teachers because oftentimes they're not included in mm -hmm. this chart and most people just feel that there's teachers and there's administrators, but we have another mm -hmm. group. So can yeah. you? I mean, one of the things when we presented uh, during the budget, I guess a month or two ago, we looked at our, you know, we had an opportunity to really look at our full complement of all of our staff and all of the positions in the district. Uh, and one of the things we discussed then, and, and, and I think that what you're referring to, Chuck, is that we have in our building, we have coaches, uh, which is a, a teacher. We have a, what we call right now a humanities coach, uh, but we have a teacher who's a teacher on assignment. So at each of our elementary buildings, we have a teacher who's on assignment, who's there to help support, uh, you know, we've called a humanities coach, but really there to support the teaching and learning uh, that is taking place and support the curriculum that is going on in our buildings. Um, and that role of that teacher and that, that, in that coach position is something that we want to continue, um, you know, to look at, uh, to look at, look at it from the standpoint that just how powerful of an opportunity and it's another level of support um, that our teachers have and our administration has in each of the buildings. Um, and I wanted to echo what everybody else has said here, and I knew you and I have talked about this together and we've had conversation as a board, but with the moving pieces, one of the things that can help ensure success is that everybody knows sort of what's expected of them. And I think you've said that you're very committed that as we change the shape and, and function and location of these roles, that people don't walk into them with a, with a blank template, that there are very clearly stated expectations all across the board so that they have a target to hit and they know what role they're supposed to play because that'll do a lot to ensure their success in these new capacities. No, I think that's critical uh, to have that. Uh, and I think it's also going to be critical to share with the entire district, um, you know, especially within the staff of the district, but share with the entire district. Uh, and when the beginning of the school year, we will share out, and Mr. Petiti and I have already had a discussion about how we want to develop that, but a, a comprehensive list so that people understand what are the different roles, who are the different people that are responsible uh, for different areas, who do I go to uh, for different concerns in different areas. So that's something that we will be sharing with everyone you know, by the start of the next school year. Yeah, and I'll just, I've agree, I agree with much of what's been said. Um, I think it's important to recognize that we want you to have the flexibility to, as Chuck said, make changes as they may be necessary down the road. And I also want to just convey to the district um, our sense that uh, Mr. Batchelor is a very good judge of people and a very good manager of people. And I think that what he's doing here is reflective of that. And so I think as a board member, it is easy to have confidence in his decisions here and trust that he is holding and will be holding um, all players here accountable and that it is something to look forward to. I think we will be running more effectively and efficiently and we can't ask for more than that um, out of our manager. So uh, with that, I'm gonna go ahead and- uh, Well, everybody else got this. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, I would say there, there, there's, there, there's six people who live on 25 Country Run who might not agree about my management. <laughs> Everybody else said something, so I guess I have to. Uh, I mean, I can't really say it better than you just did, Susan. You know, um, but I ran on reducing the administration and streamlining the structure, and this does it. Uh, you know, Ken will review it over the year and see if it needs any more tweaking or what we can do better, you know. So I fully support this. Very good. Well, let me go ahead and read the uh, recommendation, and then we'll get somebody to uh, put it forward and uh, second. 
As required by policy number 008, organization chart, all changes to the administrative regulation must be formally approved by the board prior to implementation. The revised chart identifies removal of administrative positions and changes in title for other administrative positions. And so the recommendation is that the board approves the revisions to the administrative regulation for policy number 008, the organization chart. Do I have a motion? So moved. And a second? Any further comment? All in favor? Very good. Uh, and we will now move on to the consent agenda. Although board action is required, it's generally unnecessary to hold discussion on these items. With the consent of all members, they are therefore grouped and approval is given in one motion. In the event a board member wants to discuss any item, I will, as acting president, move it to an appropriate place on the agenda. Um, and so at that, is there anyone who would like to remove anything? Yes, please. Uh, 15, 16, and 17. And I have a question um, about the policies that we're waiving second read for, um, which I don't know that I need to pull it for that. Uh, we can have, we can maybe, we can, what we can do maybe is put the, uh, put the motion and the second on the floor and then we'll have discussion and ask your question. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Anyone, anyone else? All right. May I have a motion um, to approve uh, the consent agenda items number seven through, what's the last one? What's our last guy here? 39. 39. Yeah, items number 7 through 39, except items 17, eight, uh, sorry, excuse me, 15, 16, and 17. So moved. And a second? Amy? All right. Uh, let's have board discussion, Lydia. Yeah, just could you fill us in on what the federal changes were that precipitated that we have to get this done without our normal procedure? Does anyone know that? I mean, were these things that happened, you know, within the last month? Maybe the solicitor. Mr. Rubarczyk could, I think. Okay. Oh. And then, yeah, yeah, these sorry. were these were changes that occurred as um, the development of ESSA was happening, um, and regards to federal programming. So as we go, as I attend the federal coordinator program um, programmers down at the DCIU, it was informed to us that this was one of the major changes, that, one of the changes that had to take place prior to June thirtieth to remain in compliance. So that addresses policy 203 and 808? Actually, that one just does the parental, uh, the parental engagement. The oh, yeah, food, that's easy. That's, okay. a, that's a word change. The, but the other two the food services, have substantive changes. Yep, the food services is, is um, and to main compliance with USDA laws. Um, and again, as Ms. Baumberger said, it was more about having something in record about the, the charging process and how it occurred to assure that you weren't having, as she said, food shaming occurring at the, in the line as, you were, as children are going through the lunch lines. So it was something through USDA that we received notice, I wanna say probably it was late spring that this was something that had to be completed by June 30th. Okay. And then the other one, the, um, the diseases and immunizations, that's a health change? It was, it was just to make sure that we're um, up to the state guidelines that um, make sure the language is consistent. Okay. Good. I just wanted to uh, know why we're rushing things through. Thank you. Not that I don't trust you. Just wanted the information. All right. Very good. Uh, any further discussion before we vote on the motion? Um, Lydia, on that particular one, because I know you pulled 17, 18, 15, 16, and 17 too, right? So we're just voting on the policy one first? Is that how it works? No. We're, We're voting, voting on the entire on consent agenda. No, we haven't voted yet, except for 15, 16, and 17. Okay. Shows that it was just you were asking a question. You weren't pulling it out. Okay. Gotcha. All right. All right. So for the consent agenda, uh, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? All right. Very good. Uh, Lydia, 15? Yeah. I'm going to put, I guess, Michelle on the spot here. Can you just explain... Um, this, we're accepting a bid, we're rescinding a bid, and then we're accepting a bid. And I, I do want to answer public comments. Somebody asked, 
we were originally planning to buy four buses and we're buying three. And I'm going to paraphrase what I asked the same question in committee. And the answer, I'm going to say it very sort of bluntly, so Michelle might want to correct that. But um, she looked at the replacement plan for the buses. We want to get back on schedule, which would be buying the buses in the summer. And she also looked at how frequently we were purchasing new buses and determined that maybe it was a little aggressive. So, um, and again, I'm trusting their judgment when we need to replace buses. So I'm not questioning that, but that's why we're only buying three instead of four. But can you explain the rescind, then the reissuing of the bids? Yeah, please? sure. So um, there never was a commitment to purchase four buses or five buses. Uh, what the district typically does when we do a bid is we will bid various scenarios and we will try to stay within the amount that we have budgeted. So we had $251,000 that we had budgeted for buses. So the decision was made. Mr. Hearn and myself had a discussion about uh, bidding it in a various way. So what we did is we bid one bus, we bid two buses, three buses, and four buses that were 72 passenger and propane. We also knew that we had an aging fleet of wheelchair buses, so we also bid a smaller capacity wheelchair bus. When we get the bids back, we also look at the fleet that we currently have, and we do this before as well, to make sure that the buses we're replacing are really buses that should be being replaced. And what we decided is that one of the buses we thought that we might trade in, that we were able, we were gonna make some repairs to that, so we would have another wheelchair bus as a spare. So then what we do is we look at the cost. Of course, wheelchair buses are much more expensive because uh, they have a lot more equipment in them in order to lift a wheelchair, mm -hmm. and they're often air conditioned. I think all of them are air conditioned, Mr. Hearn. He's shaking his head yes. Uh, so that bus uh, and propane buses, of course, are slightly more expensive. So when the bids came in, we took a look at the price and determined that two propane buses were adequate, 72 passenger and one wheelchair bus. I want everyone to be aware that it is over and above what was in the bid. However, we're going to be scrapping some buses and selling some buses, and we think we can make up the difference uh, from what the bid came in at and what we had budgeted. In regards to the rejection of the bid, we bid specific criteria for bus, including engine size, um, motor size, and um, fuel tank, uh, tank size. The buses that were build, uh, bid by Wolfington did not meet the criteria in any of those areas. So that's why we're recommending that it be rejected. And then in regards to whether or not we're back on schedule, yes, with the purchase of these three buses, we're back on schedule. Propane buses tend to have a longer life expectancy than diesel buses. So we don't feel that doing an award of three bids puts us in any jeopardy regarding our fleet. I'm glad that Mr. Hearn is here because can you just give us assurance that <coughs> the wheelchair buses that we're getting are going to be safe and sound and operational and we're not going to have difficulties with them? So Mr. Hearn, could you step up to the microphone to answer that, please? Thank you. Yes, we're, uh, we're bidding on the Bright Bill buses, which we feel is a much better product than the Wolfington bus. Uh, one of the issues that we uh, had with the Wolfington buses was they were uh, offering us a 10-cylinder engine. Uh, I'm sorry, we, we bid a 10-cylinder uh, engine, and they were offering us an 8-cylinder engine. And the other issue was the fuel. The fuel on the propane, uh, the mileage is limited. Uh, on s certain uh, runs, they wouldn't be able to, uh, we'd have to be fueling them too often. But the, the Bright Bill is probably the best bus on the, on the market today. We've had, uh, we've had our propane buses now for two years, and uh, we have had no issues whatsoever on the four buses we've had. This will alleviate the problems we've had with the wheelchair buses, that we're now going to have a state-of-the-art new Well, we're only bus. purchasing one wheelchair bus. We still have okay. quite a few wheelchair buses, but we expect that we're 
we're not going to have the issues we've had in the past. Okay. All right. Thank you. So, Mr. Hearn, I think um, one of the issues is we had a wheelchair bus um, at the end of the year last year that had quite a few problems. Yes. Uh, and this, it was this year we lost two wheelchair buses to an engine, to uh, engine issues. The one we're replacing, the smaller 48 passenger wheelchair bus that we were thinking about replacing, we're now going to repair. The, the problem with the, what, the, the bigger engine that we had to replace was a total engine replacement. The smaller, 40, uh, the smaller wheelchair bus, we, we actually just discovered today was a piston. So we've got the engine all part, we're going to replace the piston on it, and we expect that to, to have that back up in the service by the end of the next week. So where I'm heading with this is I don't think any of us want special needs kids stranded on buses. So is this sufficient funding to get the equipment that we need to make sure our students Absolutely. stay safe? Okay, Absolutely. and you're confident with that? Very confident. Okay. All right, are you prepared to move these forward? You know what, may I just make a comment on number 17 as well while we're talking about it briefly. Um, it's my recollection from the full board finance committee meeting and then it was echoed again, I think in the finance committee meeting of this past month that um, we haven't done a comprehensive bus utilization study since maybe 2005. And while I'm all in favor of replacing any equipment that's gonna keep our children safe, I just wanted to weigh in because I didn't at either of those meetings that I do think, and I'm sure the district's gonna do this, that it's really important that before we make, we do our whole bus replacement st uh, study, which I think it was mentioned that that's happening this fall, right, Ms. We, we actually did a comprehensive bus replacement study uh, before we purchased the propane buses. We looked at all of the buses we had, we looked at a variety of different options, whether we were going to go to natural gas or propane, and that's one of the reasons why we extended purchasing the buses until later in the year, uh, because we wanted to explore that. So we did that uh, two years ago in, in the fall. Um, we do look at that on a smaller scale every year when we're going to replace buses. That's how we make the determination. We have a list of replacement buses but then that can change depending on how the service of those individual buses are operating. But that's different from a bus utilization study, right? That, Amy, you're correct. Yeah, so, and I absolutely am in favor of that. That is a much more uh, involved kind of study than we have had. We had a, 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 for what we did, that was what we did. We targeted, we got the information we wanted. But the, the thing that you're talking about and with which I completely agree is that um, we have not looked at how in fact these buses, as they are rolling out of here and picking students up, they're all assigned routes. How many students are actually getting on them and getting off them on a, on a regular basis? And um, do we, have we matched capacity with utilization in a reasonable way? And I think it's time that we looked at that because as we're noting, these are expensive purchases. And we wanna make sure that we are using them appropriately uh, and spending wisely given the, the, um, uh, the traffic and the population that's actually getting on them and riding to and from school. Right, I think I heard at the meeting that it was before the new software was purchased was the last time it was done. And I think it would be interesting, it may show nothing, but it could also show things we can't even imagine. So I was just uh, putting in a plug for the possibility of a bus utilization study to partner with a bus, any more future bus replacement right. um, discussions. I, I actually personally would think that would be a great project to uh, assign to our good friends at the uh, Citizens Advisory Committee. Um, it's not on the list, but it's one that I would certainly appreciate seeing on the I list. I was going to have a little follow us. We've, we've made it all of about 10 or 15 minutes without, you know, we're adding new things. Sorry. To, 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 we, we, you know, before we start to add even you more know, well, to the priority well, whatever. list. I'm just, um, I'm no, just putting actually, that out there because it, it has I, come up in the has, committee. And that would be a discussion that we could look at with one of the committees. Or yeah. That. Yes. All right. Very good. Thank you for bringing that up. Uh, is there anything else before I ask Lydia to move this forward? All right, Lydia. I want to thank the administrators for putting you on the spot and answering our questions. I'd like to... Uh, Put forth item 15, 16, and 17 for um, approval. Do I have a second? A second. 
All in favor? Very good. All right. I'd just like oh, to... Oh, and wait. yes, let, let, Mr. bachelor has got a couple of comments with the, uh, with the approvals. Here. Yeah, so with our approval of uh, the consent agenda, I just want to make a note of a couple of things. Uh, uh, tonight in the approval of the consent agenda, we approved uh, a new math teacher at the high school, who I believe is here with us, uh, Mr. Huntsberger. So welcome, Mr. Huntsberger. It's great to have you. <laughs> Mr. Huntsberger, where are you from? Do you want to stand up, come to the mic, and just introduce yourself quickly? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you notice I was being good to you. I didn't ask for comment. You see, I was trying to. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, I'm from Potsdam, Pennsylvania. Uh, grew up uh, in Spring City and attended uh, O.N.J. Roberts and uh, went to college at Eastern University, just down the road. So. Excellent. And what will you be teaching? Do you know? I don't know yet, actually. I'm not <laughs> well, somebody will get on that pretty soon. <laughs> yeah, I'm very excited to reach out and, and get planning. I'm really, very really good. excited. Thank very you. Very good. Much. Thank you so much for being here. It's nice Welcome. you to be here tonight. Welcome. Uh, I'd also like to note that we approved the, all the retirements that uh, we had the opportunity to acknowledge. So one last acknowledgement of all our, our retirees. Those retirements were approved, uh, though I was you know, tempted up until the last minute to pull a few of them uh, from their retirement list. Um, we are really thankful for their years of service and all that they have done. Uh, I'd li also like to note that we approved uh, this evening on the consent agenda a new principal for Radnor Elementary School, um, Dr. Anthony Stevenson as principal of Radnor Elementary. So I'd like to congratulate uh, Dr. Stevenson uh, as he will embark at the end of the July 31st as the principal of Radnor Elementary School. Uh, I know the Radnor community, parents and students and staff are looking forward uh, to you beginning, and I know you have already planned a transition time. I think uh, Mrs. Borden, uh, see what happens when they retire? She snuck out on us, didn't she? She was here up until a moment ago. Uh, the two of you have already planned uh, some, some, trition, some transition time, so congratulations, Anthony. Congratulations. Any remarks for us? Too late. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just want to say thank you. Um, I, mean, I, I um, appreciate the fact that um, Mr. Bachelor um, had the faith um, to, and his leadership and his wisdom to um, write some of the scape gates of um, the past. And um, I look forward to working with him. And I would say that Ken won't tell anybody, but this is the second time he tried to recruit me to be a principal, and this time he was successful. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Uh, reports from board liaisons, nice and quickly. Uh, Delaware County Community College. No report. Excellent. Delaware County Intermediate Union. <laughs> oh, that's, that's Patty, isn't it? Yeah, all right. Uh, so no report. Federal Relations Network, Chuck? Yes, no report. Okay. IU Legislative Council, Pennsylvania School Boards Association. No report. Parks and Rec, I missed that meeting. Did you make it? <laughs> the Parks and Rec meeting, we had a discussion about the um, little bit of the cell towers. We also had discussion of what the role was of the Park and Recreation uh, Board and, and um, our interaction between issues and the commissioners and what value we, we add or we don't add. It was very... Uh, we have very, that discussion periodically. We do <laughs> have that periodically. And we discussed the, um, the different events that are going on. The, the summer program that, that's supposed to be fantastic. I've attended uh, in the past. I haven't attended any yet. They have um, the park and recreation with the... Uh, I guess it's a summer program that they run is is off and running and doing very well. They're very pleased with the interaction between the Park and Recreation Board, the actual recreation department, and the schools. They also uh, brought forward the fact that you know, they've had some interaction with Ken and that, that they're very uh, pleased with our selection also, that we're, we're building relationships with the township. And it, overall, it was a very good board meeting. Good. Thank you. Thank you. PTO Coordinating Council. Did not meet in June. All right. Radnor Educational Foundation, Radnor Alumni Council. Uh, they had their annual meeting, or we had the annual meeting uh, beginning of June. 
Is that right? Yeah, just a couple weeks ago. Uh, Ken was there to introduce himself to the REF. Um, they gave their end of the year report, which I missed because I had to leave early. Um, I don't know, are you going to talk? Okay. Um, so that's it. All right. Radnor High School Scholarship Fund. That's Susan. She's not here. And Radnor Page, that's who is Dave. And he's not here. Oh, did he? Okay. Or did she? Sorry. Uh, okay. Very good. Well, that was quick. Good. Any new business? <laughs> All right. Board announcements. Our next meetings will be the policy committee meeting at 4 p.m. on July 11th. And that will be in our normal spot, the administration building ground floor conference room. And then our next business meeting is not until August, August 22nd. And that will be right here at 7 o'clock. There will not be a July business meeting, so mark your calendars, clear for that. And uh, August committee meeting dates are to be determined and will be advertised and posted on the website. And now uh, we'll and have... Can I just jump in? Just yes, in the, you may. The, the policy committee in July is just because we're looking at scheduling conflicts potentially for August. So normally, oh, okay. We, normally we don't have any meetings in July. Um, but so that may take the place of the actual August policy meeting. We'll oh, could be. All right. Very good. Thanks for clarifying. Uh, okay. We can have second public comment on it, new issues raised or subjects developed following the priority discussion action items. And uh, citizens are encouraged to address the board at this time to comment on matters of concern, official action or deliberation, which are maybe before the board. Speakers are respectfully requested to avoid redundancy and to limit their comments to issues for which there was no previous opportunity to offer remarks. Same rules as before, sign in. And um, if you're unable, you may email Mr. Petiti. Is he here? Oh, he had to leave. Never mind. Don't email Mr. Petiti. He's not here. Is there anyone else who's got? Oh, wait. Oh, Patty. Sorry. We do have that. <laughs> All right. Very good. Is there any further public comment? Hi, Roberta. Hi there. Roberta Winters, 326 Williams Road. And I would like to thank the board for being responsive to feedback from the public. And that is in regards to the RMS schedule and also for the inclusion of the importance of sleep in all the textbooks that are being pu purchased for the health programs. I also appreciate this evening Ms. Bonenberger's explanation of the waiver for the second reading of the policy. And I know this will be used very sparingly and in the event of such instances as necessity of meeting the law. I also would recommend, in terms of your organizational chart, uh, Mr. Batchelor, if you would include the voters of Radnor Township above the Radnor Board of School Directors. And also, finally, as you look at that structure, I'd like to echo Mrs. Sherry to please ask you to reconsider the need for a director of operations. I've taught in schools, and Chuck can probably vouch for this, that were substandard, and I've taught in those that were award-winning. And with budget constraints, we need to have a person with the eyes on the nuts and bolts that set the physical climate for learning. As um, our facilities are worth of millions of dollars, and I would hate to be penny wise and dollar foolish. Thank you. Thanks, Roberta. Anyone else? Hi again, Judy. Welcome. Uh, first, I'd just like to reiterate that um, during the facilities meeting, I did uh, strongly advocate for being able to use elect to rent it electronically our facilities. Um, I think it would be so much easier on people that want to rent as well as the administration that is trying to monitor it. So um, I don't think there's a need. I, I, if it can be implemented in a timely manner, I think it would be a real plus for the district. And then also. Um, Related to the one reading of the policy, communicable diseases and immunization. You can see, by the way, all of the different changes. They're pretty massive. Uh, my question, first question about this um, policy. Um, on the second page, it states, waivers to the above detailed immunization requirements may be available to students who are homeless in instances where children are unable to locate immunization records due to a disaster, if there is a national vaccine shortage, or for children who transfer into the district. 
And really, I guess I'm questioning the last statement, or for children who transfer into the district, why they would receive a waiver. Because on the next page, it states, when a student who previously attended school in another school enrolls in the district, the district shall request from the school where the child previously attended the health record of the child. So it doesn't appear to me that we give waivers to students who are transferring into the district. We request their records. Could someone clarify that for me? I think that it's addressing a mid-year enrollment versus someone enrolling at the beginning of the year. Mike, do you have, Mike Kristofko, do you have a, am I getting that right? Yeah, the uh, up above there in um, uh, discussing what's required, um, it, it requires students to have certain immunizations prior to entering school or to get them within a certain period of time. And this is, and sometimes there is a tremendous delay in the transfer of records for transfer students. And so this is saying that in those cases, a waiver may be available. It's not necessarily automatic, but it may be available. Well, it doesn't specify there because there was a delay in receiving the records. It says that waivers may be available for children who transfer into the district. It doesn't seem to me to clarify that. At least I didn't understand it when I read it. I, uh, I, I could have Dr. Rabar checked or Dr. Stevenson reach out to you tomorrow. Well, I don't think I, I don't think I'm alone in trying to understand this. So um, I don't need it clarified to me. I think it needs to be clarified in the policy. And uh, I just have a question on page three. The school nurse shall report the presence of sus suspected communicable diseases to the appropriate local health authority. What's the appropriate local health authority here? I can speak to that. Uh, so that would be the Delaware County Department of Health and also the uh, Pennsylvania Department of Health. Yeah, well, it might be nice to have it listed because, you know, I just think it would be helpful. Um, and, and, you know, I will say I, I tried. I, I guess I understand. I, I would really, I think it's pretty confusing. One of the paragraphs on page two where it says, if a student does not have all the doses of a multi-dose vaccine as enumerated by Pennsylvania Department of Health and the next dose is not medically appropriate. That I really, I, if, if they don't have all the doses, why would the next dose not be medically appropriate? Because it might not have the timing right. It might not be the right time for it. So you might not be in the calendar you're due for your next dose, but you're in between doses. Yeah, again, I can see that timing might be the issue, but when it says it's not, the next dose is not medically appropriate, it's hard to understand that that's a, that would be a timing issue. It just, I think, needs additional work and clarification. So um, they're just my comments on a first reading that we've waived the other readings, but I do think that this needs a little bit more work. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, is there anything emailed in? Is that a yes? Oh, okay, great. Um, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second? All in favor? <laughs> All right, we're adjourned, thank you so much. Good night and good summer.